All right, guys, thank you for watching today. We're going to do kind of a combo video. We're going to do a unboxing on a Ryzen 5 1600. It's a first gen Zen processor. And then we're going to go ahead and install this on a motherboard. So let's get started here. And again, <clears throat> this is actually first time unboxing it. I'm gonna have to cut the label. So hopefully I don't have to do multiple takes of this because otherwise then, well, it won't be the first time I've unboxed it. Alrighty, <clears throat> right on the top here, you get this little manual that essentially tells you a whole bunch of things in like 11 different languages, how to install, what to do, what not to do, like drop your processor, don't throw it. Little insert. All right. Uh, in the box also comes the Wraith cooler. Pull this out and show you guys. <clears throat> now, AMD is nice because they actually do give you decent coolers that come with the processors. These are enough to allow the processor to function and run normal in actually pretty decent temps. Uh, this is the one that comes with here. You see this comes off, a little fan header, got a copper block. It's got uh, thermal paste already applied to it. It's an aluminum heat sink, so it keeps a little bit lighter weight. So it's not hanging off your motherboard, trying to tweak and uh, fight with it has your mounting screws here so you can thread it into your motherboard. So if your motherboard already comes with cooler mounting brackets, you'll actually have to take those off and then thread these in instead for uh, your motherboard, but it's also dependent on the motherboard. I'm not actually sure the diameter of the fan is probably like a 80, 90 millimeter fan potentially. <clears throat> that little camera just went up. And then last but not least, the actual processor in the fan itself. <clears throat> You're gonna see it's in this little cute little plastic container here. It comes with a little Ryzen sticker you can put on your case or wherever you wanna put it or just stick it on your keyboard just to remind yourself what processor you do have. AMD processors do have the pins on the processor unlike uh, Intel. So be aware of that. You do not want to drop these, you will bend pins or at least most likely bend pins. And the Ryzen 5 1600 is the AM4 socket. Again, it's the uh, first gen. I did buy this just recently. I was actually looking to build a uh, tower for my wife. She's not a fan of the idea of PC gaming. She does play console games, so she's she is a gamer, but um, I'm trying to give her a little build and hopefully, you know, She'll join in on the PC master race, essentially. Uh, I was actually gonna get her a Ryzen 1200, but when I went to Micro Center, they had this for the exact same price as the 1200. So for the same price point, why not jump up? You are gonna find that that often. That was actually kind of a stroke of luck that I actually got it that cheap, but hey, I went with it. This is a six core. It's a 3.2 gigahertz base clock with a 3. Point gigahertz, uh, 3.6 gigahertz boost clock. Uh, it's 12 threads. So it's actually a pretty decent little uh, processor here. It's gonna do everything she needs to do, plus more. It's gonna run all the games that she wants to play or could potentially play. I mean, you're talking anything from GTA 5, uh, Minecraft, you know, things of that nature. It's gonna be a spectrum, nothing too demanding. She's not gonna do any rendering or anything like that, which even in that case, this would still do a decent job of doing that. It will allow her to run things like Discord and everything else in the background and not have any problems uh, keeping all this stuff rolling in. It shouldn't bottleneck the GPU, which I'm gonna do a full build on this. I'm gonna kind of compile a lot of videos and actually do a full build for the total thing. And you will see what everything is laced together. And I will do a detailed review of what the processor does, how it works with the GPU that I selected for that one. And if it does bottleneck, it shouldn't, it really shouldn't. Cause I'm not going super high on the graphics card, but it's a decent graphics card. So, and then like I said, we're doing an install. So goodbye. We're gonna go ahead and install this into the Oris uh, M motherboards, B450. Uh, this is the one I did a previous review on. I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. I'm gonna get the cameras reset up so you can get uh, better views of it. And I'm gonna show you how to install it. 
All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install this processor onto this motherboard here. Um, I'm currently working on a static mat. It is, you know, it's the best safety thing you can do for your processor and other electronics that you're assembling. Uh, it's gonna stop you from ESDing, which is electrostatic discharge, all over your motherboard. Um, you do that, you're going to fry something and your brand new components that you spent your harder money on is going to be gone at that point in time. So nobody wants that. Nobody wants to go through that. Nobody wants to deal with that. And it's no fun to, and then you try to return the stuff and you're going to go through a hassle with that as well. So I have that hooked up. I actually have it strapped to my ankle. So that way you don't have to see me dangling around with the wrist straps, um, to try and help prevent any ESD. So for starters, little lever right here on the socket. I'm gonna pull that up, <clears throat> get it completely vertical. You'll see this one actually has a little backstop on the board itself to stop it from over flexing, but you could still force it past that, but you don't want to, because you're gonna break it. The motherboard itself has a little triangle in the one corner, and that's an alignment uh, you know, signifier. You're going to go ahead and take that triangle and match it to the one that's on the processor here, right there in that corner. So when you're installing this, make sure they line up. You do not want to try and force this in the wrong way. You will bend the pins, you will damage it. And fixing the pins is possible, but not easily feasible and highly unlikely you're gonna do it without any issues. So taking again, we have our little lever here. So we're gonna go ahead and line up triangle in the corner to triangle on the corner right here. And we're going to get this, or it's gonna set it just right down there. See how easily that fell in? That's what you wanna see. You don't wanna to try to wiggle it around or move it and force it in. Cause if you're doing that, you're running the risk of bending the pins and you're going to, again, you're probably gonna break something. You don't wanna do that. So once that's in, take your little lever here and just lock it down and you're done. That's all you need to do. Be smart about it. Now, we got one more thing we're gonna do. We're gonna install the cooler for this thing. So I'm gonna pause again for a brief second and just zoom out the camera so you can see what's going on. So guys, as stated before in the previous port, port part, we have the AMD cooler that came with our processor. Like I said, this will require us moving these brackets that we have right here and right here. I really don't feel like doing that and I'm kind of gonna cheat a little bit here. This did come with this processor. Now, when I did my own personal build not too long ago, I got the uh, Ryzen 7 2700X and it came with a cooler, a slightly better cooler, but I water cooled it anyway. So I'm gonna cheat. So going in, taking my Ryzen 2700 box open and apart. Cooler for that. A little cord too, I can't forget about that. So now, as I rip the box, we're gonna use this cooler. This is a slightly beefier cooler, as stated prior. If you look at this one, you see there's the copper heat plate right there. That's what's gonna uh, rest on your processor and help send the heat into the aluminum heat sink right here. Um, works good, like I said, it's, it's gonna do the job, but we're gonna go a little bit beefier. Uh, this one, big old copper heat plate at the bottom and heat pipes going in to all of our beautiful fins to an RGB fan. So, hey, it's gonna be better because it's RGB. Why not? So we're gonna take that, we're gonna mount that up. Uh, I don't like the mounting mechanism on these personally. I just, not a fan. Basic principle here is you take this little tab and this little tab 
and you're going to hook it on these mounting brackets right here. I'll move that forward a little bit. There you go. You can see it better now. Right there and right there. We're going to line it up on our processor and we're going to go ahead and cinch it down. Now the fun part is, is how do I want to arrange this? I don't know, but we're going to just go ahead and do it and see what happens. Take the loose one, hook that in there. Make sure your locking tab on the other side is flexed away. Let it fall right in. And I know you can't really see this, so I'm gonna spin this just so you guys can see this. Right there. So this, you're gonna get this down onto that tab right there. All right, so yeah, you got this mounted in and just wanna spin this around and show you. So that's latched. This is still gonna be kind of loosey-goosey a little bit. So you're gonna slowly, you can you can break it still, but you wanna do it gently. You're just gonna force this, it's gently force it. So yeah, that makes sense. Gently force. You're gonna get this to go ahead and fold over completely and then go flat. Now you're installed. Your locking tab here is installed. and your locking tab here is installed. So that's what you wanna do. I did forget to mention that there is already thermal paste on these uh, coolers. I did show you the one on the other one, the Race Spire, not the Prism, but this one also has thermal paste installed. So that's why I didn't go ahead and go through the process. Um, if you are going through the process of installing your own thermal paste on a brand new cooler, or if you just don't wanna use the one that's already installed, on these and you just, for whatever reason you don't trust it. There's a million and one methods out there. Everybody's gonna have their own opinion on it. You can do the X shape, you can do a dot, you can do the P, you can do a plus sign, you can do multiple little dots. You can even just take it and naturally just spread it out with a finger and a glove and just make it smooth. So kind of go with your choice on that one. Um, the other thing with this one is obviously we're gonna plug this baby in. We have I'll rotate this around again for easier seeing. This motherboard right here, we're looking at right there. This little bad boy, this little fan header, and it's not wanting to play nice with me right now, but boom. We'll go right there, but I'm actually gonna wait because I hmm, got it there. Don't know if I like that. It's not gonna be fun for cable management to have this big old dangly cable right here, but We'll see how I can tuck that and go from there. I don't want to go ahead and flip the whole uh, cooler all the way around because most likely then the cable's gonna be too short for that to happen. Um, based on what I'm looking at, that's probably the case. And then if I did that, the AMD wouldn't be right side up. So, you know, it would just look weird. It would, my OCD would kick in and I'd freak out and take it apart and have this up here anyway. So we'll see.